Yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, um, welcome to Real Talk for Rock Feedback. Thank you very much for Thank you, for spending Real time. Talk. Are you yeah. sure it's going to be Real Talk? Absolutely. Well, let's, let's aim for like, it. Because, uh, because, you see, uh, I'm just going to vent for a second here. <laughs> um, I did an interview with a paper in Scotland. It was a whole complete interview. Talked about the album, talked about are we going to tour, talked about the last tour, how the show in Scotland was great, thank you very much, talked about all these things. And then at the close of the interview, we were going to say goodbye, and the, and the interviewer said, um, I can't remember her name now, what, is, uh, what do you think about, um, oh, me, you moron, you know, the Scottish woman from X Factor. Um, uh, Subo, Su- Susan Boyle. Susan, yeah. what do you think about Susan Boyle? <laughs> I said, oh. I said, I really don't know that much about her other than the fact I know she sold a lot of records real fast. And I said, the only thing I know about her is just what I've read, and I've read about her brother saying that he's worried about her, and I've worried, and I saw other articles that, said she had a problem with uh, coming in second or doing something. And I, I said, I think she's fairly fragile. And I think if she's going to be involved with this business, they need to take really good oh. care of her. I said, I, you know, it's like she likes to sing, and that's great. And, and, but I think you need to take care of her. And I said, and so I believe Simon Cowell is kind of handling her. And I said, well, Simon Cowell needs to take really good care of her. Mm. Then they said, well, what do you think about these shows? And I went, oh, man, what do you think about these shows, like X Factor? Uh, And I said, well, they're okay. I mean, people like to watch them on TV. And and in the case of Susan Boyle, that, you know, they sold some records because she got worldwide attention and YouTube. And I said, I understand this, the the empathy and the attraction that an audience would have to Susan Boyle and wanting her, you know, wanting her to succeed and wanting her to feel good about it. I mean, I got that. And I said, she was on Dancing with the Stars. She sang pretty good. And um, he said, what do you think of American Idol? I said, well, uh, I'm going to tell you the whole story. This is all one interview about the album. And this is just a little ending. And I said, well, American Idol, I said, I think Simon Cowell is a very smart I think he's very intelligent. I very. I think he's in time. I think he understands timing of things and how these kind of things work. And I, I said some of the things he says to the contestants are fine, except for when he starts giving him stage directions. I said the man should not give stage directions because he's never been on a stage in his life and has no clue. Other than that, I think he's great. End of article. Okay, from that one thing has come. Meatloaf bashes Simon Cowell. Not the article, just that. Meatloaf bashes Simon Cowell. Three times. Three different places around the Meatloaf bashes Simon Cowell. Meatloaf wants to hop on the Susan Boyle bandwagon. I don't even know what that means, but yeah. In other words, in other words, she's had success, so I want to try to attach myself to her for ride her coattails for success. Um, uh, and it just kept going. There's a, there was t- 10 different articles about Susan Boyle and Simon Cowell. They, they, you never saw another repeat of any of the Hank Cool Teddy Bear stuff. It was all about uh, meatloaf worries about Susan Boyle. What the? What the I, I couldn't even remember her name just like now. What's wrong with you humans? Fuck you! Okay, because... They've been talking about me going on American Idol, right, over there to promote yeah. Hank Cold Teddy Bear. And I went, well, you bastards. Oh, that's really going to be a good way for me to get on American Idol. Meatloaf bashes Simon Cowell. Every record's always had that wall of sound. It's always been based around that specter thing. And I've tried to get away with that, and everybody just wants me to keep doing that. And then they have those stacked Todd Rundgren background vocals, which were what was on Bad Out of Hell, and I go, let's not do that. And then they get stuck. Okay. Everybody always goes along and goes, okay, we won't do that. And then they go, well, let's do that now. And they get these backgrounds and they do that. And, it's, uh, and that's what's gone on. 
Rob, I said to Rob, I don't want to do this wall of sound. He goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> I said, I don't want those stacked backgrounds. Oh, thank you. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want it piano driven. I don't want that. Perfect. You're in the right space at the right time. And that's what I got. Well, that's good because those records exist, you know. Why, why, there's no need to repeat them. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, an I, intelligent <laughs> human being walks the earth. I, I, I have a phrase that we walk around. I see dumb people. Finally, an intelligent human being. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you it's very like much. Now I know there's three of us. <laughs> Good. Well, an achievement all round, I think. There. Also, we should go drinking sometime, or not, or not. Maybe no, we that, shouldn't do that. No, see, let's that would ruin that. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's leave that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, with your life, which is full of like kind of, it's almost like there's a lot of folklore attached to it because obviously the, you know, I mean, no kidding. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that it's so. Really? Yeah, well, sifting. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but sifting through your life, it's impossible to sometimes deduce what is real, what is, what's not true, and you know, and all these sorts of things. Um, so, with that in mind, you know, when, when you look at the media, is it something that you've happily contorted at will to sometimes fall in your favour, or has it always been like something that you can't control? Do you think? Do you mean have I perpetuated some of these stories? Well, I, d I don't and know. Allegations? <laughs> uh, me? <laughs> well, I guess it did sort of start, start happening in 1977. Mm. Uh, and yes, I did perpetuate a few of them. I perpetuated ones about my age, when I was born, where I was born, how I got the name Meatloaf, because I just didn't find any of that relevant. Yeah. I, I, just, I just thought, who cares? Why? And this is, I still am going to do, I'm still going to say this. What difference is my name make? What difference how old I am? What difference what shoes I wear? What pants I wear? What, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm not wearing my Christian Dior today. I must be fucked up. Um, uh, what perfume I'm... What difference as long as the album is good, the movie is good? Wh who cares about... Why... Why should anything else make a difference? If I, if I deliver, if anybody delivers good music, that's what it should be about. It should be about the music. If I deliver a great performance in a film, that's what it should be about. If I deliver, if the film delivers a great performance, that's what it should be about.